Good morning, everyone. Come in, come in. I'm working on a horn. Let me switch over to the, the big screen. And you can actually see how good the morning is. <laughs> Welcome in, everyone. I'm Miss C. I live at Miss C's Cottage, the home of the Sun Bunnies. And I make them and give them to people so they know some bunny loves them. And the way this world is going, we all need to know that we are valuable and that we are loved. Um, when you come in through my door, leave your worries outside with your shoes on the doormat. Come in, pick out your seat, but make sure you get a cup of coffee. The Keurig is working. The um, uh, tea pot, the hot pot is hot, and there's a variety of teas this morning. Some English breakfast, Earl Grey, and um, I threw in a, a ginger, um, what is it called, wild ginger? I don't know. It's got a lion on the front of it. I thought maybe it would, like, <sighs> hasn't worked so far. But, you know, I still hope. And uh, water over here for those who are purists. Grab a seat. Um, make yourself comfortable. You can bring your project. You can, um, what are we doing here? You can bring your project. You can um, make along with us. We're working on a zebra. And today we're going to do the zebra's head. And I think I showed you all of them that we've worked on so far. This is the blue one that goes to, I believe this one goes to Helen because she likes blue. This is the red and white, or the black and white and red all over. And I gave him a mohawk like Woodstock. I think he is so cute. He is so cute. And then we've got a more traditional, well, if neon stripes is traditional, a more neon stripe, a more traditional zebra. But today we're going to be doing the zebra head. And I'm going to show you how to shape the head, decrease for the eyes, and then the muzzle. Okay. Let's welcome you all in officially. Okay. Now let's go back to the comment section. I have to figure this all out. Whoops, who was that? Marlena, Marlena, Marlena Meter. I grew up with um, Mary Meter in school. Um, well, she was from Luna Pier, Michigan. Welcome in, Marlena. I don't remember your name from before. If you're new, welcome, welcome. Grab yourself something to drink. Um, grab yourself uh, water if you want. Let me get my book because I have some special shout outs. For today, um, um, Nana Michelle. Um, I don't know if Nana Michelle is in here today or not. I'm gonna take my hand away from your face. Um, Anyway, um, Mimi, tell Clara I said hello, and I'm glad she's liking Peg. And I wanted to let you know that um, we had pizza frites this morning. Now, raise your hand if you know what pizza frites is. And um, I really don't expect you to know because it's an Italian thing. I hope with somebody. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Oh, good, good, um, Dawn, another Dawn. Nellie, you did not miss a thing. Whenever you come in, it's the perfect time. And welcome in, welcome in. Hello, um, Sherry. Um, what was I going to tell you, Sherry? It came and went. Um. There's Frozen Stone, and I had forgotten her name again, and I have so, so apologized. You know, this has been kind of um, a strange week for me, and I'm, 
gone through a lot and um and i'm not going to bore you with it because it's it's gone and i don't focus on those things frozen 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 angela welcome in angela and Sandra Carlton and Pam, welcome in, Pam. Suzanne, yes, it is pizza feet. It is fried pizza dough. Oh, you are so smart. Um, you take the pizza dough and you cut it into so like bigger than walnut size, and then you roll it flat. You put a little uh, olive oil on your um, rolling pin. And uh, being a teacher of three-year-olds, I have a rolling pin that is about this long. We used it for Play-Doh, and it comes in so handy. Um, you, you just roll that out until you get a piece about this big, uh, about jelly roll or apple fritter size, whatever. And then um, you fry it in, in oil, and when it comes out, you put a little sweetened ricotta cheese on it, and you put some sliced nectarines on it, and then you sprinkle a little bit of brown, well, a considerable a bit of brown sugar on it, and then you get the, the glazer out, and you do like the top of um, creme brulee, where, where they, I can't think of the word right now, it's been a week, uh, they heat it up. And they, they, it gets a hard glaze on it. You bite into that and you think you are on your way to heaven, sort of. It is so, so good. And um, Elmo made pizza freak for me this morning. And it is, was yummy. It is gone. <laughs> it was yummy and it is gone. Yeah, Helen, they're, they're kind of a dessert pizza, I guess. Do I stretch before I crochet? No, I do not stretch before I crochet. But a lot of times, Samantha, I will have to stop and um, just exercise my fingers. Mostly it's my thumbs. Um, if I'm really a wonky day, I'll play the little, you know that game. Um, but what I also do is to st stretch my arms up to the sky and and try and pull my shoulders back and my head forward to release because i get real tight here through the shoulders and a lot of times if i'm sitting there crocheting um i will have to stop and and stretch my arms up don aaron my love now we can start the party because you have arrived I love you, Dawn. I hope you think, I hope you don't think less of me after last night. But it's their show. They do what they want. And um, I agree with what I can agree with. And I stay silent with the things that I'm not sure about yet. And that's it. Mara's here. And Jennifer, Jennifer, I sent you a text this morning. Um, last, the beginning of the year, I think, I sent Jennifer a pattern of, well, I don't have one here right now, but it's it's a pattern of a little bird, and it's called Bubba Bird. This one is the chicken, but it's very similar. The body is very similar but uh, Bubba Bird has this. She does not have um, the comb, of course, but it's got the eyes and the wings and I think a little tail. But um, I had sent the pattern to Jennifer thinking that um, she might want to make some uh, emotional support Bubba's <laughs> for her children's hospital. Could be, Sherry. Um, I love you as always. I, I will love you till the end of the earth. Okay, yeah, it is really cute. It is really cute. And then, so I hope she she sent me a picture this morning, and hers was absolutely adorable. In fact, I now know that I have the ability to 
uh, show things like that, which I didn't know I had before. Isn't that the cutest thing? <laughs> I just love him. And there on the back is his little tail. <laughs> you did a marvelous job. Marvelous job, Jen. Jennifer. She prefers to be called Jennifer, even though her, her channel name is Dinky K. Jen. She prefers to be called Jennifer, and I always try and remember that. Elizabeth Toller, good morning, good morning, good morning. Isn't it cute, Shirley? A bluebird of happiness, yes. There's my Mara. She is, she is the calmest, sweetest, most wonderful thing. And there's Elaine. Okay, hold, hold up a minute, Elaine. Elaine. Elaine's dot and crafting. Okay, you won a sum bunny, Elaine, from um, Dawn Yarndall and John's birthday. Do you have a color or did I ask you? Do you have a color of a bunny that you would prefer? There's Gabriella. I call her Gabriella. Her name is Gabriel, but I call her Gabriella because I live with an Italian. Hello, Laura Harper. Welcome into the cottage. Surprise me. Okay, I'm going to write that down because I told you this has been a week and I... Okay. Um... I had the weirdest thing happen to me this week. I had something called an ocular migraine. I don't know if it, it has happened to any of you here. Um, feel the love in the minute we, she comes in. Oh, well, thank you, Pam. Thank you. Th that, that means a lot because, you know, you have in your head what you want to do and what you want to say, but you can't control um, the things that pop in. And you never know how people on the other side are going to take it either. So that that's assurance to me that um, God is still with me and I am still with him. Okay, um, this ocular migraine, it, it's really weird. It starts out in my eye about the size of the end of, of this crochet hook. And it's black and silver, like really, really shining silver. You can't even hardly look at it. It's so bright. And then uh, as, it, as it begins to develop, I guess, it opens up into a crescent. And then that crescent in my eye gets bigger and bigger and bigger and moves and bigger and bigger and bigger in about 20 minutes half an hour it's gone but during that time you can't crochet you can't you can't watch youtube you can't read you 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 can't do anything because you have this brilliant light in your eye that's black and it doesn't hurt i don't get a headache um, I think it's, I think it's like a TIA, but I don't know. I don't know that much about them, but, um, I used to get migraines, real migraines and I, I, but that's a whole nother lifetime and this isn't that kind of a program, but I just thought it was really funny that this one, and when that first started happening, Words were popping off the page, and um, the books on the bookshelf were moving. That <laughs> was really, really weird. So um, there's nothing you can do. You just have to wait for them to go away. So finally, um, it got big enough that it was over here on the side of, of my eye. And at that point, my, my whole face felt really, really heavy, and my eye felt heavy, like as if I had had a stroke. It, it just was so heavy. but. There wasn't any, it, 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 my face had not changed. It's still the way it is. Um, but at that point when it was off way far on the side, I finally 
I just, I was drained physically, emotionally. So I, I went and took a nap. And it, of course, it's gone when you wake up. But 15 minutes in and, okay, now, today, we are working on, I think, uh, I think I've got everything I wanted to say. Oh, um, I took, took my fingernail polish off from Easter because it was starting to crack. And, um, you know, whenever you take the polish off, you have to wash your hands to get all the excess stuff and whatever, <coughs> excuse me, whatever oil you might have left. And I used Sherry's um, Somebody Loves You um, foaming hand soap that she gave me for my Happy Mail. My hands smell so good. So thank you, Sherry, for that. There's Rosie. If anyone needs me, just come poke me. I'm sitting back. Okay, Rosie, you work on your... That's what I encourage. Bring your project to the cottage. Just grab a seat, a cuppa, and uh, relax and have fun. Bonnie, you supervise. <laughs> I love you, Bonnie. <laughs> oh, thank you, Samantha. Please hit the thumbs up on your way in or on your way back. It, it it did. It does smell good. It does smell good. Okay, uh, tell Claire I said hello. And you know what? As far as preparation, so let's um, let's move right along. Today we are working on a zebra head. No, not a zebra. Um, yeah, the zebra head. So. Let me go back to, does anybody have any questions so far on feet or bodies or? Yeah, thanks, Dory. I'm good. I'm good. Switched your black yarn again. My zebra's other feet are bigger. You know what? Um, I just make four feet. Hey, Bailey girl. How are you, Babs? I love you. Um, let's see. Denny's going to supervise Bonnie. <laughs> oh, that ought to be fun. I love you guys. Yes, I have the dots hoods, but I think I gave them away to someone. KK, uh, Lydia's here. Good morning, Lydia. I missed something. Hold on. Let me go back in the chat for a minute. Miss C, you're like a grandma or second grandma to many of us, and we love you. Thrifty Crocheter, do I have your name in my book? Because um, I have slept and gone through several doorways this morning, and I don't recognize that name. I have to apologize. Thrifty. Thrifty. Thrifty Crochet or Rachel? I should know that. My daughter's name is Rachel. I apologize to you, Rachel, and I love you, and thank you for being um, a granddaughter to me. Um, Mishi, over at uh, Cro Mishi Crochet's Wonderful Beautiful Things or something like that, and uh, she's German, and she calls me Oma, and Juan, uh, the yarn addict, he, his mother is german and so he says i have a lot of his grandmother's traits and i remind him of his grandmother so he calls me oma c which is it i don't know it makes me feel good yes samantha i have tried the dots hooks and um they don't work for me as well because they are um they're more like a susan bates and i'm not real fond of susan bates i prefer the um boy hooks with the more rounded and I love my clovers oh these these and the tulips I think I told you this before but these are my two favorite hooks um, these are flat and they have this nice little spongy spot right here because I hold like a knife and so that little spongy spot right there is where my thumb goes and I can just dig ditches all day long and this also has a nice flat spot on it and a thumb stop so my thumb fits right there, and I could just dig ditches all day long with that one, too. My mother held hers like this, and she would just fly and fly and fly and fly. And when I learned to crochet, 
I held it like a knife and she'd say, oh, Diana, you look like you're digging a ditch. <laughs> so it is what it is. All right, let's see, back up to where we were. Lydia, you not on your channel uh, right now? Taking a break, okay? Suzanne Fenton, how do I send me pictures? You send them to Miss C's Cottage at gmail dot com. Bonnie KK, Sonia, welcome in, Sanja, and Denny. Denny, I've been making stuff for Denny for years. No, not really years, but it seems like it. We've been we've been friends for a long time. Let's see. Alice Burns is lurking in the background. Alice, make sure that you get some pizza free while it's still hot. A cup of coffee or tea and or some water before you settle in your chair. My crochet story. Now, do I have that one in my book? My 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 no i do not okay uh my crochet story if you don't mind oh uh, would you share your given name my crochet story Aisha, welcome in. Uh-oh. Did I miss something? Aisha, is that Maureen? Is that what your name is? The Thrifty Crocheter. That's Rachel. Mishi's Crochet Nook. Yes, thank you, Mara. I can always count on Mara. All right, just don't have the CEO checkbook. <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> There's no funds in the account anyway. I just shipped off a bunch of stuff. Oh, Brenda Quimby. That sounds like an Australian name. Where are you from, Brenda? Letitia Evans. Good morning, Letitia. Welcome into Miss C's Cottage. Jessica, oh my gosh, there's a bunch of people here today. I hold it like you might. Yeah, a lot of people hold it that way. Okay, I'm Jessica Fenton and another, or Suzanne Fenton and Jesse, uh, my head is, and Vicki Harrell, welcome in. Dory, Dory, Dory. And there's Mac and tie dyed on. I know I have that one. Duh, it's Dawn. <laughs> Sally Stevens, hello, hello. Hi, Bonnie. Maureen. I'm always here, but sometimes just to lurking. My crochet story is Maureen. All right. Thank you, Maureen, for sharing that. I appreciate it. All right. Now I'm going to go to the end of the chat. Miss C, I'm so glad you said that about the dot hooks. They are saving me money. Oh, CNK star. Wait, that, that red flag. CNK star. Carol, you won, um, you won something, um, uh, at, Mishi's birthday live. And so would you send me uh, a choice, a color choice? And um, wait, wait, don't go away. Um, excuse me, Carol, please send me your address. Uh, you send it to 
Miss C's Cottage at gmail.com. Don't put the, comp, the apostrophe in. It's just Miss C's Cottage at gmail.com. And then I can I can uh, make up what you want in the color you want and get it off to you because Mishi's birthday live was last month, and I I don't I don't like being behind. And I've got one, two, three. Uh, these are the autism winners, and they're done. I just need to get their slips, um, their uh, overseas slips done. Five, and this is six. Yeah, this is six pages I've got to do. So if you get yours in, I'll get I'll get yours out. You're in Wisconsin. It's an it's an yeah, Quimby is an English. Well, uh, you know uh, that uh, several years ago um when england didn't like someone or if they'd done something they didn't want or if they were just like on the street and undesirable they shipped them off to australia so there are a lot of british english names in australia also you will okay thank you carol thank you all right let's get started then put my books away i've got all my bookkeeping done Oh, good. I don't feel so bad, Dory. If Dory didn't do it, then I, I don't feel so bad about not having done it. Because you know Dory, she did it. And there's Tiffany. Good morning, Tiffany. All right, let's get started on this uh, zebra head. Now, you know, let me switch back over to the other camera. Do my little webcam. Okay. That's right. Furls and I don't work. Uh, furls don't work for me either. Um, no, Samantha, but sometimes my thumbs. Remember, I told, I have arthritis in my thumbs because when I was in my 20s, uh, I, um, I was in two accidents. Um, and. Um, the steering wheel jerked my hands and so my thumbs are, i have now have arthritis in them like 50 years later all right um hi tiffany welcome in tiffany grab something to drink there's pizza frit uh still see some left pizza frit is fried pizza dough with uh, ricotta cheese sweetened ricotta cheese on it and some sliced uh nectarines and then um the brown sugar on the top and do you i can't think of the word somebody mara knows the word i'm sure when you run the little hot thing over it and it crusts up like creme brulee top what is that called hey zach my man and there's steve welcome steve i love it when you come in Okay, let's get started. We're going to start with the magic circle as usual. And um, hold it with your thumb. Wrap it twice. Ah, wrong fingers. Hold it with your thumb. Wrap it twice. Up over your finger. And I crimp. I crimp it here. Now, I had this thing set perfectly. So that you would be able to see. All right, I'm going to go in with my hook down. I'm going to snag it and bring it back through. And then I'm going to grab my first crochet. Oops. One. And this little hook that we snagged does not count. So we've got one, two, three four 
five, six. And then we're going to pull the tail and close up one of the circles. And we're going to take that little circle and pull it to close up. Now, now there's my tail stuck in there, so let's get it out of the way. We're going to pull the small circle. Oops, nope, we're going to pull. Well, I'm messing you all up, but you're going to pull the, the one that's bigger. You pull it to make the small, and then we're going to pull the tail to make the other one small. We're going to tuck that tail. We're going to put in... Yeah, we need kind of a long one. Well, that ought to do it. Let's just cut us one to fit. How about that? Fix that right now. All right, we're going to put in a row marker. Tuck our tail behind. You sent unicorn cakes on the table? Oh, I'm going to make sure I get one. Hello, Susan. Welcome in. Welcome in. Okay. Now we're going to put, just, just like we start out the, the rabbit foot, just like we start out the body, just like we start out the ear, just like we started out the, uh, the body of the zebra and the zebra's feet, we're going to take our six stitches and increase them to 12. This little guy doesn't count, remember? So we're going to go into that first single crochet and put two in there. And actually, that first little snag helps fill that hole. Because you don't want anything leaking out of the bottom of a zebra. I don't believe I said that. Okay, five, six, seven, eight. What did I do? One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven and twelve. We're going to flip our row marker over. And the next row will have, you guessed it, 18. So we're going to crochet one, two in the next, one, and two in the next. So we're going to turn these two stitches into three with a single crochet and two in the next. And because we increase that evenly all the way around, our zebra's going to have a nice round bottom. No lumps on this one. I'm going to take a minute and move my coffee to the back because last time I pulled my yarn through, it went right through the coffee. One two, three, and this should be 17, no, 16, 17, and 18. Now we're going to move our marker to the front, and this will be our third row. Let's see, we're going to do one, two, three, four. Okay, Sunita, did I mess up the banner on the bottom of this thing by putting that thing in underneath Miss Cease Cottage? Somebody, Sunday number 14, did I mess you up?
Well, if I do this, I can't see the... No, okay. Hey, Carrie! Good morning, good morning, Miss Carrie. How are you this morning? Okay, let's make sure we are where we are. One, two, three, four. One, two. Two in this one makes eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one. 22, 23, and 24, and I am going to switch from this hook to my um, my 5 millimeter because this yarn, um, and I don't know what it is, but this yarn is a beautiful, beautiful, nice, you can see how thick this yarn is. It's, it's just delightful to work with. It's going to make an awesome zebra. Just don't know who to send this one to yet. God will let me know. All right, we're on the next row. We just finished row four. We're on row five, which means we're going to have five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Bonnie, I have a blanket for you. It's a really simple blanket. You start out with a chain that's going to be about 30 inches long. <coughs> if you know how to do the foundation single crochet, that works really well. Start out with um, 30 inches of single crochet, uh, um, chain rather, chain or a single crochet foundation stitch. And then um, your first, first two rows, I think, first two rows are just double crochets in each stitch across. Front, you flip it over and go to the other side. And then um, the next row. You start out um, seven double crochets, chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next, chain one, skip one, seven double crochets, all the way across. And that makes your first open row of bunny feet. When you flip it and come back the next row, you come in till your first open, you double crochet in that, you skip one, skip over the double crochet, and double crochet in the next chain one, and then go across the same way. And that makes the, you wind up with something that looks like, that like a bunny foot and that's that's your blanket and this is all double crochets and this is all double crochets but every so often you've got open these open works for your bunny feet it is the prettiest little blanket meanwhile back at the zebra but i know bonnie doesn't do amigurumi so i want to i don't want her hands to be idle because you know idle hands are the devil's handiwork mac 
Mac, I will put it, I, I'll tell you what, guys, if you want to do a blanket rather than amigurumi, and that's perfectly fine with me, I will put that pattern in the, uh, spring is here, my bubbling spring, I love you so much, um, I will put it in my um, community tab, okay, so that you who, those of you who would like to do a blanket instead can work on that one because it's very simple. All it is is double crochets. Okay, meanwhile, back at the zebra. What do we have here? We're on row five. I can see that. Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. If I miss one of you that has come in, I do so humbly apologize because um, it's really difficult for my brain anyway to focus on two things at once and if i'm focused on this i'm i i miss a lot of the chat so um you know i welcome all of you in you are always welcome here day or night and most of you have my phone number elmo probably won't like it but i give you the house phone so because my cell phone doesn't work in the cottage so if you uh oh <laughs> You're kidding me. They're going to induce his her daughter on Wednesday. So your first grandbaby. Mac, do you know what it is? Alma, you are never late at the cottage. You always arrive here right on time. Oh, it's a little girl? Or you're praying for a little girl. I can't <laughs> I can't read that. Okay. Meanwhile, back at the zebra. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, you don't know what it is. It doesn't matter as long as it's healthy. That is true. Zach, you are never late. You, you always show up right on time. Three, four, five, six. Oh, God is so good. Oh, almost got some music going in the other room. It's classical. I just, I just love it. I can't tell you what it is, but it sure is beautiful. All right, now I messed up somewhere. So let's go back and count, and then we'll, we'll fix it. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 One, two, three. 
here's how we're going to fix it. 4, 5, and 6. You think I'm taking this out and starting over? You're crazy. Okay, now we need to get to 7. And this is the 6th row. We just completed the 6th row, 2, 4, 6. We're going to start on row 7, which is 1. We should have 7 stitches. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It is one of the hazards of working with variegated yarn is sometimes that the colors are close and it's real easy to skip a stitch. It would be real easy to skip over this one and go over here. But um, that's why I pull the sides out so I can actually see the holes in the stitches because I'm old and I need glasses and that works best for me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, Two, three, four, five. We have one stitch less. See, our fudge from last row hasn't hurt us a bit. We still have room for six and seven. Now I'm going to flip this back because we're, we just finished row seven and we're going on um, row up to row 12. I want you to finish row 12 and while you're working on rows 7 through 12 I am going to be working on reading the chat and working on this also so go ahead and do the next um, six rows and when you get to row 13 stop okay uh, Samantha, I really don't know what the name of this yarn is, and I do apologize for that. Um, I got it for two thirty nine. It's probably a Hobby Lobby, but I really don't know because I don't have. Let me check my my wall. I don't have any other yarn that even looks like this yarn. Hmm. Uh. Hey, Samantha, did you get your tails? Yes, stop at row 13. Do not do row 13. Uh, Samantha, I don't I don't know what the name of it is. Uh, um, I'll have to look it up or... All right, I missed Shirley's comment. Hi, Tank. Hi, Samantha. Hi, Shirley. Thank you, Tank, for saying, saying hi to Shirley. <laughs> yeah, Shirley gave her granddaughter, I think it's her granddaughter, Clara, um, uh, somebody that she had crocheted, and she named her Peg, which is so cute. Yeah, it looks like a Hobby Lobby one, but um, I'm sure it's discontinued because it's got the sale sticker on it. 
and it does not have a label and I had two of them and I've already made uh, something oh I made a, a bunny out of the other one and um, and it's mailed off to somebody I don't know I can't keep but after you've made 300 bunnies you really don't remember where they go okay Samantha I'll go over and take a look at it I I this was not a good week, so um, I haven't done a lot. Thank you, Danny. See if you can find it. All right, I'm going to keep crocheting, so when you get to 13, I'll be at 13 and be ready for you. But I am serious. I don't care what you work on. When you come to my cottage, um, you can work on a blanket or a shrug. I made the most beautiful wedding shrug Sarah Satch had put out a, a pattern for a wedding shrug and as you probably all know by now the air conditioning vent is right there just inside my cottage door and it blows right on me and a lot of times oops almost missed a stitch there a lot of times my shoulders will get cold and the first thing I do is raise my shoulders up or hunch my shoulders. And then my neck muscles get sore and I wind up with a headache. So I like to keep my shoulders covered, my neck and shoulders covered if there's a cool breeze blowing or whatever. So when she put this pattern out for the wedding shrug, I'm telling you, it was just perfect. And it was about the same time that Sunita and Stitching with Friends was doing that sweater. But that sweater was a bit too long for me. And I didn't need all of that cover up. And I would have probably needed three skeins of yarn to make it long enough to wrap around me and get my arms in too. So I just decided instead of making that i would make the wedding shrug and i made it out of latte the latte cake oh my gosh it is so nice so nice guys so if you get a chance go over to sarah satch channel um, i think it's just sarah satch i don't know and somebody will put it in the chat for me, I know, because you guys are so good to me. And you know I'm old. Um, and aqua. Ooh. Regina Provenzano. See, now she knows what Pizza Freed is, don't you? Naming bunnies. I have a wound vac on my foot, and I've named it Louise. <laughs> oh, Suzanne. That is funny. I had um, a, a cancer uh, fright. Um, some calcifications were found in my left breast, and they had to do surgery and remove it, and they took a, a few uh, lymph nodes out just to make sure. And so I call my left breast Louise, <laughs> Lefty Lucy, you know, Louise. Okay, and every day she gives me fits, but um, I have to just stop focusing on the fact that it's uncomfortable and itches and it looks terrible when you're walking across the parking lot to be fondling your left breast people look at you funny and I have to focus on the fact that I still have it the cancer is gone you have to focus on you have to focus on the positive you can't focus on the pain or the discomfort or because your life can be so miserable so I focus on the fact that Lucy's still there and um, she is cancer-free, and that makes me happy. Ah, Sunita, you are a love. That is it, the wedding shrug crochet pattern. Thank you so much, sweetheart. Yeah, I like this yarn. I like this yarn. Okay, we're on the next row, and we're still, if you count, you'll, you should have 42 stitches, because remember we have... We started out with six. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six sides. We've got seven stitches per side. Seven times six is 42. So you should have 42 stitches each round. Yeah, I like Sarah too. She is just so fun. And 
you know, she has problems too, but you never feel like you've been drugged down into the pit of her problems. She's always, and I love her laugh, and she doesn't mind laughing at herself. I think that's another thing that I like about her. Jen Reeves, there's my Jen, Jen. Hello, Jen, I love you. I told you I'm not coming up, right? Oh, KK, did I tell you I'm not coming up? Um, finances are such this month that we're just going to have to postpone it, which I, I apologize for. But here, I'll give you a chicken to look at while you're... Um, Oh, come on, little chicken. I'll give you a chicken to look at. We'll make this one day. We'll go into smaller things. Um, contagious, comforting laughter. Yes, it is. And you know what else is contagious? It's the comfortable silence that you have. Wait, i got to go back. When when you're with a friend, you're almost done with your pink somebody. Oh, Samantha, I'm so proud of you. Amber, Amber, welcome into the cottage. There's Mimi. Mimi loves crochet. Mimi is one of my best supporters. One, one of my best supporters. I can say that. You guys, um, if you don't want to call and talk to me personally, that's fine. Um, a lot of people don't because they don't know me, but it's more comfortable to text. If you want to text me at uh, missyscottage at gmail.com. Um, gosh, I talk to Stephanie, um, I text with Shirley Bain, I text with, uh, Tiffany, I text with KK, <laughs> Sunita, Mishi, Bunches. And I always answer your text. And I never tell what we talk about because it's not mine to tell. And um, my grandpa used to say, you know, if he would catch us talking about, we, we would go to Indiana to my grandpa's house. And we called him Papu. Uh, my grandma was Nino. It was Nino and Papu's house. And we would go to Indiana and we would meet all the kids that were there in Indiana. We didn't get to see them maybe once a year, maybe twice a year. So we would catch up with what was going on and, you know, tell them what was going on in our lives. And then when we get back to Nina and Papa's house, we'd sit and we'd say, oh, did you see, you know, how kids are. Did you see how fat she got? And, oh, look at her hair. Oh, he's got acne. All, you know, how kids can get. And my Papa would look at us and he would just say, go sit on your own dung heap. And I didn't I didn't understand it, and I didn't appreciate it because I didn't understand it. And now, you know, when you look back, the wisdom of those old people who don't know anything because they're so old, it's like, you know, every life has a bunch of crap in it, and it just happens, you know, that, that you know, that's another saying, it, it happens, and you can't do anything about it, but do what you can and pray about the rest. Oh, I'm making somebody's heart smile again. Mimi, yeah, well, you know, make my smile too, so there. <laughs> okay, um, Samantha, you can't make that assumption. You can say the dots hooks are worth it to you because you like them. But see, I can't say that because I don't care for that type of hook. So I can't say that, and you can't make that assumption on my behalf. And that's that. <laughs> anyway, my 
my grandpa would say, go sit on your own dunk heap. And now I realize that everybody has so much going on in their lives that if they sat back and took care of it, they wouldn't have time to visit anybody else's dung heap, get in anybody else's business. First of all, you probably didn't create their mess. Second of all, you can't solve their mess for them. And thirdly, you got enough mess of your own that you need to work on. So all we can do is love people because God is love. And that's all he asks us to do. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And so many people love themselves so much. If we could all just transfer some of that love to our neighbors and accept them for who they are, the way they are, even though you may not like some of the things that they do, we're not commanded to like people. There's not one place in the Bible that God says you have to like everyone. But there are several places in the book, it's in the book, that says you must love your neighbor because God is love. And when we love, we are being godly. We are doing what God asks of us. We hurt when our friends get in trouble. And, and when we get in trouble, God hurts for us. But he still loves us, even though he may not like what we're into. He still loves us so much that he always gives us a way out if we make the right choice. And if we don't, we face the consequence, which nobody likes, but we have to do it anyway. That's right, Mimi. Treat others like you want to be treated, like you wish they would treat you. Okay, let's see where we are. Uh, two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay, I'm I'm on eleven. How are you guys doing? Are you up to thirteen and waiting on me chit chatting? I have the chickens' colors. I love the chickens' colors. Oh, you know what? This was an end of a sock yarn, and it just worked up so perfectly. I love this little chicken. Dory made me an unemotional support chicken and sent it to me. And I just love her. He's up here on the shelf. <coughs> well, excuse me. Um, there she is. Dory did it. Dory did it. She made me this emotional support chicken. There we go. And she and my chickens have been clucking away. Sometimes I have to close the cottage door at night. They get so loud. Yeah, you do need to listen to your body, that's for sure. And you are the best doctor for your body. You know when to start and when to stop and when to take a break. <laughs> you know, I would imagine you can... Um, my bunnies are emotional support bunnies. I just never called them that because I called them some bunnies so that you would know some bunny loved you. But I hope they give you all the love you need and the emotional support that you, you need to get through your day sometimes. Um, of course, I've always got one in my hand. May not be completed, but I got body parts <laughs> always in my hands, except when I'm doing blankets. And I, I think I told you the other day that I keep a, a car project bag. And I have one, it's usually a blanket or a long-term project in, in a bag. And I keep that in my car. It's one of the um, vinyl bags. It's, it's not a, a fabric bag because I don't want it to get messed up in the car. But the vinyl ones are perfect. And I keep a project in there because Elmo's a driver and he loves to drive and he'll say to me sometimes get in the car old woman we're going on a think 
and we'll get in the car because I have to get shoes on because I don't wear shoes in the house and I'm just jibber jabbering like I ate sugar all morning and I haven't shut up yet. Whew. Uh, but we'll get in the car and he'll go on a think and I have no clue what he's thinking. His fingers are going back and forth and his head's nodding up and down. So whatever it is, it must be a good thing. But I am concentrating on whatever projects in my bag, which, like I said, is usually a, a long-term blanket. There's Ronell Alred. Thank you uh, for stopping into the the cottage this morning, Ronell. <coughs> Please excuse this cough. I don't know where it's coming from. I love my YouTube family. You guys have all gotten to be so precious to me. And most of your names are in this book. This is my, my prayer book. A lot of your names are in there. Elizabeth in Illinois. I love to crochet. I'm in Illinois. Are you getting snow, Elizabeth? Any of those storms that went through? Elizabeth's another person that I talked to. Okay, I think I'm at 13. Let's just shoot, shoot, chickens. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13. Okay, I'm at 13. Are you guys at 13? Are you ready? Zach, you can do a single crochet. You know how to crochet in the round, and you know how to count to 42 or 48. You can do it. Big rainstorms, yeah. Suzanne, I pray for all of you guys because you're my family. You are my family. And um, Gabrielle is ready. Regina's ready. Cynthia King, you've been part of my family for a long time. Cynthia is the one. Who made this beautiful shawlette for me. And I wear it around my shoulders a lot while I'm in here before I did my shrug. And my shrug's up in the other room, so I wear it a lot. Yes, we love you, Misty Elizabeth. I love you too, Elizabeth. Oh, don't listen to your head. Don't listen to your head. Listen to me. Go back and do my um, replays and listen to me because... Well, because I love you, and I want you to do this. Yarn name, please. Um, yarn inspired is Gabrielle. I call her Gabriella because Andy uh, Elmo is uh, Italian, Gabriella, but her name is Gabrielle. Yeah, you can move next to Denny. She is gentle. She is a gentle teacher. Ellie Leva, welcome in. Welcome in, Moonrose Craft. It's Puzzler Homestead. It's for Samantha. What's for Samantha? Okay, we're on 13. Let's go for it. Uh, row 13 is we're going to decrease from 42 back to 36. If you remember, when we went up to this last row, we did five and increased in the sixth one, which gave us 42. On this row, we're going to decrease. So we're going to, to, to crochet, single crochet our five, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And now we're going to decrease over the next two. And if you remember, we go into the front loop only of the first one. 
the front loop only of the second one. Yarn over, pull, pull through those two loops, yarn over and decrease. One, two, three, four, five. I swear this thing moves on its own, and we didn't have a, a earth tremors or anything. Okay, um, two, three, four, five, and we're going to go in the front loop of this one and the front loop of the next one. It's really hard to see. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and make your single crochet decrease. One. <laughs> Two. Three. Four. This probably is not the best thread to use working as a tutorial. All right, and we're just going to do that around one, two, three, four, five, and decrease. One, oops, pulling too hard, two, three, four, five, and decrease. One, two, three, four, five. We should have two stitches left, and we do. So we're going to go in the front loop of this one and the front loop of this one, yarn over and decrease. Now we're on row two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. We're on row fourteen. Hi, Nancy and Nancy. Oh, Nancy, too old to care, Nancy. Hello, Nancy. Welcome in. All right, row 14 says, um, I don't like this row. And since I've been, I, th this is the um, seventh zebra that I've done. And so um, I'm going to show you exactly how the first seven have, I have done the first seven, but I'm going to also give you an alternative because I like it better. But um, I'm going to do this one right according to the direction so that I'm not going to confuse you. Row 14 says single crochet and then a decrease 12 times around. That's what we're going to do. Single crochet and then a decrease. Single crochet and a decrease. Single crochet and a decrease. And you do that all the way around. Now see this is um, this is part of your decrease, so don't get confused you can see this decrease coming up out of here don't get confused you got to move it around so that you can get your single crochet and your decrease and it might not be a bad idea to put your thumb there on your second decrease so that when you're finished you know that that's your decrease and this is your next stitch Single crochet and a decrease. And 
and oops, that's the decrease, see? Single crochet and the decrease. A single crochet and the decrease. And a single crochet and the decrease. You know, I love it when people who do things a lot give you these little tricks and tips. Oh, thank you, Mimi. Um, I find that if you just do the front loops, then um, you don't have that, you don't, it's not so bulky. I mean, you could go through both and pull up a loop, but then you've got three there. And that's for me and, and what I like, it's, it's too much. So if I just take just the front loops and I just have two and it's just like every other stitch of two. All right, single and decrease. Single. And we've got two stitches left. So we're going to go in the top of this one and in the front loop of this one. And there's your decrease. Now we're going for row 15. Okay. Row 15 is similar. It's double or single crochet two and then decrease all the way around. So let's do that. One, two, it's another decrease row. And that finishes the eye on the head portion of your zebra. One, two, and a decrease. This is the last row of the head. One, two, and this is the area where we'll put the eyes decrease. Oop. Two. And decrease. And decrease. The only difference in the um, by doing this row um, for row uh, fourteen is that the the um, muzzle comes out a little smaller, but it really doesn't. I don't find that it makes that much of a difference. Okay, there we are at the end of row 16. No, 15. That's the end of row 15. And I'm going to put some stuffing in mine right now. Thank you, Sunita. Yeah, that's row 15. I'm going to tuck that tail. And I'm going to take a nice round puff and just stick it in there. All the way around and then I'm going to go around with my fingers and just kind of tuck it in the outside and then this round puff I'm going to stick right here in the middle so I've got the head pretty full but not too full okay and while we're doing this Let's go ahead and put in some eyes. And I think I'm going to put I think I'm just going to put black eyes in with this one because I don't have I don't have big enough blue eyes. So I'm just going to put plain black eyes. And <coughs> to place your eyes, what I do is 
I figure out where my start is because that's where the first point is, you know, on the six. And then you're going to go to the second point and the third point and the fourth and the fifth and the sixth. So you've got to get your bump. And somewhere on this six, we're going to disregard this one. And somewhere on this six, we're going to put our eyes. And you see how that's kind of, well, um, right here is kind of like the center. So I'm going to see if I can center my eyes. We'll put one about here. I'm, and I like to do it on the 14th row. I don't know why, but um, we'll try that there on the 14th. And that might not be big enough. And then I'm going to come over here and put another one in on the 14th row and take a look at it and see if that's even. If I like that. Now I'm going to move this up one stitch. And these eyes aren't big enough. So I'm taking them out and I'm putting the big ones in. And I think you'll see a difference. Well, I tell you, if it's not the brain, it's the fingers that don't work. Uh, this needs to come down a bit. You just kind of have to play with these eyes and the placement of them until it looks right for you. This has got to come down a bit. Well, my goodness. Okay, I think that's about right. What do you guys think? An eye and an eye. All right, I'm going to put backs on them. Now, here's a trick that I learned from Jeannie of um, Butterfly Genie. Oh, these are the smaller ones. I don't know if I can get them to fit. Nope, I can't. Okay, uh, let me get the bigger ones out. I think this is a bigger one. And I'll show you a trick that she showed me. It's part of what I love about this Yarny community is... Oh, my poor old thumbs. They just aren't what they need to be. Okay, I'm going to show you a trick. Once you get this um, washer on, this is a Coleman fire starter. And um, my mom never used to let me play because I, I lit the woods on fire once. Oh, maybe it's out. Oh, no, it's not. I'm just going to, um, oh, come on now. Now I want to show you off. You don't want to work. I just want to melt the end of this. And once I get it melted, I'm going to flatten that with my scissors so that this flattened part is bigger than the hole in the washer and it will not come off. So if you're concerned about safety eyes for kids and you use a big enough eye and you flatten the back, you should be okay. Now let's find this other eye, which has, of course, fallen out. Of course it did. All right. Now, let's get a washer on it. Oh, these poor old hands. Poor old thumbs. Oh. 
You know, I have a tool, but I'm not really sure how to use it. Let me get this. Oh, if I can reach it without falling over, honestly. Oh, here's some more eyes. Well, good. This is the tool, I think. It's the tool that I need. Put this over that. And put this down on the on the on the hard surface and push. Nah. Oh my, come on. You know, even though you guys hurt and your hips don't work and your knees don't work well and you have headaches and every time the barometric pressure goes down, your bones hurt, please, please don't focus on those things. Focus on the fact that you're young, that you are, are relatively healthy, that your thumbs work. This is going to pop right off. Okay, Diana, do something bigger. Focus on the things that you can do. Focus on the positive. Thank God for, sit down and write down your blessings, for heaven's sakes. How many blessings are you given a day? God loves you so much, you probably don't even see them all. Just sit for an hour and write down the blessings that you have. Starting with oh, thumbs that work. Write that down for number one. Number two, your eyesight. Those of you who don't wear glasses, put that down for number two. Well, I just about had it. Let's go to the big guns, shall we? Little holes, little holes, ah, bigger holes. Here's the bucket with the bigger holes. Now watch how easy this one goes on. Oh, fall drop. Look at that. Pop, pop. Okay. All this time. I'm using the metal blade on my scissors because <laughs> I tried it here. Guess what, guys? This is plastic, and all it did was melt into it. <laughs> I had a heck of a time trying to get this off, so don't do that. <laughs> Live and learn. All right. We're never going to finish this if we don't hurry up. We don't have much to go. Um, in my behalf, we don't have much to go. I bought these little things at the dollar store. And they're just little glass jars, uh, but they have this, um, I don't know if you can see the flat side. This is the bottom, but it has a flat side. So you can either sit it on the, on the um, bottom or you can tip it. And they just fit in my rack back here. Uh, where's the rack? Here, yeah, they just fit in this rack. All my jars fit right here. Okay, now I've taken you on a whirlwind ride. Those are my eyes. All my eyes are in those little jars, if you want to know. Okay, now we're back at, that out of the way. We're back at row, just finished um, 15. We're going to do 16. And 
Um, if you remember 15, we did two and a decrease. We're going to put those stitches right back in there. So we're going to do one, two, and an increase. And like I told you, this row finished the head and where the eyes go. Now this row starts the muzzle. So we do one, two, and an increase. Almost probably having probably having fits because we're going over. But if you guys need to leave, I understand. And an increase. One. Two. And an increase. One. Two. And an increase. Okay, you are going to do, that was row, this, uh, we just finished row 17. Um, with your increases. Now we're going to go to row 23. And if you're doing a traditional zebra where you've got the dark muzzle, when you get to... Um, 21, use your darker color. If you're putting in zebra stripes every two rows, like this guy, where you're changing colors every two rows, when you get to 21, switch to the black, and we'll finish off the muzzle with black. If you're using a variegated that has black in it or a different color altogether, um, I just went with whatever the color combination was on that one. This zebra, I just I just finished off the whole thing. I didn't give him a black muzzle. So it's really um, there's a recommended way, and then it's, there's your way, and you do it whichever way looks best for you. So the next um, six, seven rounds is going to be, should be 24 stitches. And again, I'm just going to zip through and read the chat. In fact, I'm going to come back up. Okay, I'm going to come back up here so that um, I can read the chat and sit over here. There's Art. And Art's name is, I think, let me double check before I say it and embarrass myself. Because I had to wait a long time before I got her name. Shannon. Shannon, welcome in, Shannon. Rita Pacheco. I love you, Rita. Okay, um, go ahead and keep working. And to those of you who are working on this, don't forget those of you who want to do the blanket. Um I will put that the the recipe for that in the my um, community tab, and it's very simple. <clears throat> Zach, you can do this one too. It's just double crochets and chain one spaces. It's called fillet crochet, and the name of the blanket is the bunny tracks, and it works up to be 
well, you can make it any size you want, 24 to 36, or you can make it 30 by 40 if you're going to donate it to uh, Boggy Creek. It should be at least 30 by 40. Um, I think I told you last week, Dana, um, Dana Wanderlust Crochet, she has a program that she is donating to and asked us if we would participate. And I put it out to you guys last week. Um, no, is Lori in here? Lori, I love you. I haven't seen you for a while. In fact, I just took your name off the box out front. I have, <laughs> there were three people that I was sending yarn to almost every month, sending patterns or sending stuff to get them started. And um, Lori was one, Kim G was one, and forgive me, but I've forgotten the name of the third girl, and she has since passed away, and I cannot remember her name, and I'm going to feel really bad. But, um, Kathy, you know what? You are my family. You you are all my family. I, I've told you before, um, my family doesn't call or come. And so what I have is you. And and I I look forward to seeing you on other chats. I look forward to welcoming you to my cottage and having a beverage and a, and a breakfast and bringing your stuff and sitting. And I love it when you just... The roar of you chatting amongst yourself is just so comforting to me that um, I will be your grandma, your aunt, your sister, uh, your niece. Well, I don't know about niece because I'm pretty old. Um, I'll be your aunt, uh, your grandma, your great grandma, whatever you need. I'll be there. I'll be your best friend. One day. Lucas Oil Stadium. Hmm. Yeah, you're here for the first time in a long time. I know, Lori. I've been missing you. Denisha, behave. Don't make me come up there, Denisha. I know where you live. I have your address. Okay, I better get busy or I'm not going to make this. And it'll be two hours. And boy, he'll be boiling. Because two hours is pretty draining for me. And I am going to have to go take a nap today. And today is the day that Elmo usually puts me in the car for my Sunday drive. And then we drive up towards Lake City and stop at Burger King and get a 52-cent ice cream cone. Although now they've raised them to, I think they're 74 cents or 69 cents. I think they're 69 plus tax now. But I don't care. They taste just as good. You could be your my sister. I'm younger. Shirley, how old do you think I am? How old is your brother? I'll put it that way. I would love to be your sister, by the way. Not necessarily. Um, filet crochet is just a, well, it is a pattern of open and closed um, boxes or squares. It's, it's also called open work. But the pattern that I use just has three open spots in two rows. It's in biking distance. Wow, Lori. He's 84. Okay. Um, I am 77. Denisha, are you disrupting class? I've missed something in the chat I'm trying to get this done. Denisha is, is a Christian sister to me. And she's usually um, pretty well behaved. But you know what? Even us Christian sisters get kind of 
sassy once in a while. So nothing says a Christian can't have fun. Oh, yeah, a Sunday on a Sunday. Well, Elmo doesn't give me that because... Although I try to give each one of my amigurumis a nice round bottom, I do not have a nice round bottom. Uh, so Elmo doesn't let me have a sundae. I only get a vanilla ice cream cone. <laughs> so see a sister. Okay, Shirley, that works for me. I'll be your sister anytime. Mimi 66, okay. Well, I'm just 11 years older. We could be sisters, Mimi. Where are we? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Almost there, guys. This is my row 20. Bailey's another sister in Christ. She gets sassy once in a while, and I have to just say to her, Bailey, don't make me drive to Canada. Oh, and another one is KK and Spring. When those two get together, whoo -hoo, I have to threaten them all the time, settle them down. Fifty-eight. Okay. Well, see, now you, you could be a niece. Actually, you could be a daughter. Um, my son, my birth son, will be, I'm 77, he will be 57 in November. And my grandson will be 37 in August. Well, Paula, you can be a niece. Heck, I don't care what relationship. We're all sisters in Christ, so I'll take you all as my family. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. We're on 21. What did we say? 21 is when you flip to dark. Okay, I am not flipping to to uh, muzzle color. How dare you, sassy sister, to bring it here to Canada? <laughs> hey, I've been there before. I have crossed the line from Detroit into Canada. So, yeah, Bonnie, I could be your mother. So watch out, because when I give you the mother look, you know I love you. Oh, I am so happy to have you, Lori. Um, oh, like I was saying, I, I put a box up in my cubbies by my shipping table. And if I would hear during the chat that um, Kim or Lori, and who is the other one, Lori? You have to tell me who the other girl was. If if I saw in the chat that they needed something, I would grab it and go put it in their box. And then when I shipped out next, I'd ship it to them. Regina Provenzano, Rita Pacheco. See, there's some sisters right there. You're behaving, Bonnie. You better behave. I'm giving you a blanket to work on. Oh, which that takes me back. You're sorry, you can't remember. Okay, I think it was Kim's friend that she was really close to in Indiana. And she was really, really, really sick. And she passed away. And it's... Okay, Zoila. Zoila, I didn't even know you were in here. I'm so sorry. Thank you, thank you, thank you for stopping in. And if she's ready to go, then you need to take her home. But um, thank you. Pay more attention. Amy Long, yes, Long. I kept thinking young. 
but it was Amy Long that passed away. You're right. Thank you, Tank. Um, and she lived in Illinois, not in Indiana. Okay. Well, they're close. They're close. Anyway, um, I left her name up on that box for a long time because I didn't want to believe it. But, you know, the truth is truth, and you can't deny truth because truth is truth. Which is what Bailey and I were talking about last night with Gabrielle. Truth is truth, and you can deny it if you want to, but it's still truth. Mitt Romney told me that. He was in a debate for a presidential election one year, and somebody was saying, la 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 la, la 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 la, and Mitt Romney said, hold on a minute. I have boys, and I know that it doesn't matter um, what you say, how many times you say it, or how loud you say it, it still doesn't make it true. And boy, that just red flag for me, it hit me where I was, and I've never forgotten it. And the truth is true, whether you want to believe it or not, it's still out there. And sometimes it's good to just sit and examine what we believe in and what our truths are, and then maybe do some research to find out if our truths are truth or if they're just um, it's like the lady who uh, got the roast out of the refrigerator, cut the end of it off, and put it in a separate pan. And her 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 daughter said, "Why do you do that, Mom?" She said, "I don't know. My mom always did it." And the granddaughter said, "Well, let's ask her." So they went in the other room and they said, "Grandma, why did you always cut off the end of the the uh, pot roast and put it in a separate pan when you did the roast?" She said. My mom always did that. So they, 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 next time they went to the nursing home, they said, Grandma, I got a question for you. Why is it that when you make a beef roast that you cut the end of it off and put it in a separate pan? You know, they wanted to know what that wonderful tradition was. And um, she looked up at him and she said, I didn't have a pan big enough for the whole roast. So you have to be careful what your traditions are based on. Is it a truth or is it just a tradition? Tradition, tradition. You got to be careful. Okay, I'm finishing up here. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. And this is 23. Isn't that a silly story? It's true, though. Yeah. Her pan was too small. Sherry, you've heard it before. I know you have because I told it before. But that's okay. But, you know, that it, you do have to sit down and examine, why do I do these things? Why? What is my basis? What is my decision? Is it a good decision? Do I reap a positive consequence from this uh, choice? Because we all make choices in our lives. We choose to get out of bed in the morning or stay another 10 minutes. We choose to put on our brown pants or our black pants. You know, and most of our decisions don't carry heavy consequences, but um, unfortunately some of them do. And we, we do have to think through and maybe do some research on uh, why we do the things we do. Thank you, Pam. Welcome in, Pam. I hope there's a pizza frite left. Coffee pot's still on, so grab yourself some coffee or water. Yes, I did, Jen. Um, instead of doing single crochet decrease, single crochet around, you can two two single crochets and a decrease around. And the only thing that makes a difference is the muzzle is a little bit narrower, which really doesn't matter. And if you're going to do a horse rather than a, a zebra, because a zebra's muzzle is a little bit wider than a horse's. So if you're going to do a horse or a unicorn or something along that manner, I would say go ahead and do the uh, double or single crochet too and decrease. 
Oh, no live today. Okay. So if we run over a bit, oh my gosh, we have run over a bit, haven't we? Thank you, Susan. Well, I don't know how many are left, but those who are, I hope that, um, I hope we're doing, uh, you're still with me because we've only got two rows to go, 24 and 25. 24 is our, our regular <laughs> two, dope, two single crochets, single crochet two and decrease. And I'll go back over to the other camera for a minute so that you can watch that. I'll flip over here. Okay. Back over here, single crochet, single crochet, decrease. Single crochet, single crochet. Samantha, are you keeping up? Am I going too fast for you, sweetheart? Crochet, single crochet. Samantha is one of the special people that comes into my chat, and I just love her. She keeps me on track. And the last two are a decrease. And then we go to the very last, which before I do that, um, I want to fill up the rest of the muzzle. So we're going to stick in some stuff. Stick. We're going to, I've had a stuffed muzzle all week. He might as well have a stuffed muscle, muzzle today. I'm telling you, I've had a leaky beak all week. Huh. We've had some weather changes with all these storms going through. It's been um, quite a challenge for those of us who have sinus. Um, I don't like to stuff my heads too full because then they get too heavy and then they wobble back and forth on the neck. And I don't. I don't like that. So I stuff the body well, but I don't stuff the muzzle as firm. All right, now we're going to do this 25th row, and we're going to do one double crochet, I mean a single crochet, and um, decrease. A single crochet. Excuse me a minute. <coughs> Gads. Oh, that's better. Okay, a single crochet and a decrease. A single crochet and next is a decrease. And that's just going to close that right up. A single crochet and a decrease. Now, if I remember correctly, we did the ears last week. single crochet and a decrease and I am holding my tension really tight because I don't want this stitch to get too big on my decrease and a single crochet and a decrease Now I'm just going to pull through one, and I'm going to leave oh, about eight inches, I guess. Then I'm going to what spring calls pinch and pull cinch, pinch and cinch. What does she call it? Pinch and I don't know. Tighten it down. Okay, and you can pull your marker out now. You don't need it. And there is your um, zebra. With the muzzle. I love this yarn, how it just came into a muzzle all on its own. So I'm going to take my blunt tip needle and thread my yarn. And I always pull it across, pinch it. And then I, 
I slide the needle down right over the pinch and it just, it goes right through. All right. And then I'm going to go into that first stitch and pick up the first loop. And I'm going to purl up the front loop only and the front loop only and the front loop only and the front loop of all of the stitches around. Uh, three is about as many as I can get. One, two, three, one, two, and we'll go into this one, which is the third one. Now I'm going to pull this tight. And that closes up his little nose. And you see that little nose? And that's why I don't put any noses on mine. Because it makes its own nose. Now I'm going to go right back into those stitches that are laying horizontal for me. One more time. Two, three, oops, not that one. And that kind of makes that nose stand out a bit. Oh, come on. There we go. And I'm going to pull tight again. I'm going to line up my eyes and... I'm going to go right through the middle of the nose and I'm going to flip it upside down and come out somewhere back here on the head portion. Come out with my needle. Uh oh, almost giving me the cutoff sign. That's two hours. Oh boy, we really overran. Thank you guys for sticking with me that long. And that is our um, our zebra. Let me see if I have an ear here. Do I have an ear here? I do have an ear. Do I have an ear? Oh, my golly, I thought I made an ear. I got a tail. I got a mane. No, I don't. You know how to do the ears. We did them last week. You start out the same way with a magic circle. Um, snag and six. And then you do 12 and then you do 18. And then you do two rows of 18. And then you do single crochet decrease. All the way around for a round and then you do you got two more rounds to do after that you do two two a uh, uh, two decrease in the next two around which gives you six stitches and then the last you double you decrease in the in two stitches <laughs> in each of the next two stitches for three times which gives you three stitches and that when you Pull that up, gives you a nice, you get your 6, your 12, your 18, 18, 18. You decrease here 1 and then a decrease, 1 and a decrease. In this one you do, in these two stitches you decrease, in these two stitches you decrease. So you have 6 stitches and then you decrease in each of the two stitches until you get 1, 2, three and then you pull it through and you've got this nice point here on the end of your ear that you can sew i put the eye of the ear right over the eye and that gives me a nice position on the head to sew it on so when he's done he's done Okay. And that's a nice position about halfway back on his head. 
And then this mane is really easy. You, you basically stay a mohawk right up the middle. And all it is, is um, you slip stitch in and you, you chain six. You slip stitch into one up and one over. Chain six, slip stitch into one up and one over the other direction until you get back and forth all the way up till you get between the ears. And when you get between his ears, then you make sure that these chain sevens come down and give him like bangs. If you don't like this, you can do your fingers, wrap your yarn around your fingers, and um, cut it, and then do like you do fringe, where you take a strand, you fold it in half, you stick it through his head, you Grab your yarn, grab your yarn and pull it through, uh, and then it tightens up, and it becomes the mane. And then when you get to the top, you just do some for bangs. So there's a couple different ways you can finish your your zebra. Yeah, I like the fringe too. Rainbow Rhapsody and the Red Heart. That will be pretty, Danny. Color yarn starting to starting one today. Okay, Rita. Um, go back over if you have any questions, please. Um, who was it? Shirley? No, maybe. I don't know. Somebody. Oh shoot, I forgot to. I didn't write it down, but someone asked me, um, please, please tell me what the body is again because it's I can't hear it. So I did write out the, the uh, description of the, the recipe for the body. Oh, Kathy, which one did you like? I love ice cream, too. I just don't get it. Only I only get it on Sundays. Are you selling? No, Lori, I don't sell the pattern. I give it away. I, you know me. I give it away. I give away yarn. I, I give away the patterns. And then when I'm done with them, I give the, the amigurumi away. So um, these six, well, I think there's five here. But these um, are going to uh, people who are autistic all over the world. And... Um, we did this on a, a World Autistic Awareness Day for um, Nisi. And um, I, may, I wanted to make sure that everyone who was autistic all over the world had an opportunity to win a zebra because so many people can only afford to ship in the United States only. So I wanted to make sure that anyone who really needed one could have one. And so I, I made up six of them, and, um, and they're going out this week. I'm so excited, but I give away yarn. I give away hooks. You know me. I, I give away my heart because I love you all so much. And Helen gets one. Helen, if I'm right, this, you get the blue one, right? Is that the one you wanted? Because Helen likes blue. I guess I could get my, my chart out. You know, Lori, I'm not generous. I'm really a very selfish person, and I all, always have been very, very selfish. But I am blessed. I am blessed by God. And if I don't give, he may take his blessings from me, and I don't want that. That's too scary. Uh, yeah, yeah, Helen gets that blue one. Yeah, she... She, I think, was the first one to choose, and she said, oh, that's the one I want. <laughs> no, she got number two, I think. Oh, I'm not pulling my chart out. It's okay. All right, guys. Um, do anybody have any questions about, yeah, the red one? He's black and white and red all over. This little tail. <laughs> I love these little tails. You know, I made six of them. Here's the seventh one, and by golly, they are all different. They all have their own personalities. 
I think that's what makes it easy for me to write the stories when God gives me a story. Sometimes they just red flag and I ask him if he's sure that he wants me to put that in the story. But um, Flossom Crochet with Marty. Marty, welcome in. I'm so glad that you missed our zebra today. But please feel free to go back and watch the replays. We've been making zebras. Uh, this one is black and white and red all over. Uh, this one, Helen in England won. Uh, this one goes to my friend and daughter, um, granddaughter, I guess. Um, oh, isn't that just the thing? You go to introduce your best friend, you can't remember her name. <laughs> Dawn Aaron. Dawn Aaron's Loving Hands Crochet. This goes to Dawn Aaron. She picked the, the brown one. And there are actually brown zebras, and they are called blonde zebras. So this one's going to be a little because it's blonde. Pardon me for all of you blonde people are out there. Bonnie, you did a good job today keeping us all in check. Okay, I am going to say adieu, adieu, Alveda Zane, farewell, all that other stuff. Um, next week, Next week, if we've got any body parts, uh, Sunita will let me know what body parts we've got left, and we'll put it all together next week, okay? So if you are a little behind and haven't gotten all four of your legs done or you're missing an ear or a tail or whatever, um, you've got a whole week. You've got a whole week to catch up. So uh, go back and look at the... Um, Replays, rewinds, redos, look at the replays, and uh, please don't forget to leave your thumbs. I, I love DNA. It just brings you closer to me. Although you might not want to get too close to me because uh, Elmo and I had our DNA done with 23andMe, and mine came back 3% Neanderthal. That's why my... Here on my arms are so long. Okay, loves, um, I love each and every one of you. I thank you so much for, one, hunting me out, coming to my channel, making these wonderful amigurumis. I can't keep up with them all. So knowing that you are making them and giving them, it, it warms my heart. Uh, when Mimi said she was giving one to her granddaughter, it just... It was like a hug. It was like a long-distance hug. Awesome, awesome sauce. Okay, and um, if you if you make one, consider making a second one for Dana. She is asking us to do that, to donate to Mountain State's Children's Home, a blanket or an, uh, some bunny. So if you, if you are so inclined and you have the time um, and you want to do that, you don't have the yarn? Send me a Gmail at misscscottage at gmail.com and I'll send you some yarn. Um, I love each and every one of you. Um, I'm ready to go get my ice cream cone, but I want to leave you with this blessing. May God bless you and keep you in good health this week. May he make his face shine on you and give you peace. And whether you believe in my God of gods, the Holy of Holies, or whether you believe in a power greater than yourself, it doesn't matter. Because what it boils down to is love. And if you believe in love, you are a sister of mine. You are my family, and I love you with all my heart. And may my God who is greater than me. He is the all-powerful in my world. May he bless you with something special this week. May he keep you in peace. May he um, add to your health this week and um, bring you back to me next Sunday. I love you all.
and I'll see you then. Bye, guys. <laughs>